Hey everyone, welcome back. My name's Craig, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about another recipe, using validation groups for buttons. Now, this recipe is really cool because it allows you to conditionally change whether a field or component on an interface is required or not, depending on user selection. So we're gonna explore this recipe and figure out how we can use it for one of our use cases. All right, but don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment to see more videos like this one. And of course, check out the other relevant resources in the description below. All right, let's get started. Okay, so here we are in our documentation and you can see a little bit about this recipe. Use validation groups for buttons with multiple validation rules. So you'll notice here in the image, we have a bunch of different required fields. First name, that little asterisk right there, right? Last name, department, and title. But phone number and start date, they do not have that little asterisk, so they are not technically required. However, you will notice we have a validation message popping up. Now, because we clicked on onboard employee now, or at least that's what the image is suggesting, they are required. So how can we incorporate validation groups into our own project? So for that, I'm gonna go ahead and switch on over to our interface. Okay, so for our project, we're talking about the Acme Automobile Reference Application and the Add Vehicle Form. Now, it's already set up with a bunch of required fields, year, make, model, and so forth. You'll notice that little blue asterisk, meaning it is required. Now, if I was to click Add Vehicle to submit the form, of course, it's gonna yell at me because all of these fields are required and I don't have a value in them. But what if I wanted to incorporate a draft feature where a user can save a draft when they're adding a vehicle? They're gonna come back to it later, but they're gonna save a draft. Now, if they're gonna save a draft, then all of these fields don't need to be required because they're just gonna come back to it. But if they click add vehicle, then we do want these fields to be required because we don't wanna add a vehicle without a year, make, model and so forth. Now, to incorporate the draft feature, there are some other things we'll need to do in the process model and in the database. But for our example today, we're just focusing on the interface and validation groups. So first things first, we need to incorporate a button that allows saving a draft. So I'm gonna drag in a button, and I'm gonna bring that button just to the right side of cancel, and then over in the component configuration, I'll just title this save draft. Okay, now I want the save draft button to submit the form just like normal. So that way it goes into the process and it moves down the line, but I don't want save draft to trigger a required response for all of my text fields. So I'm gonna scroll down in my component configuration. The first thing I do need to do is check the submit box. This just tells the interface to submit and move on to the next phase down the process model. But normally fields are not required. They are only set to be required when you click on the field and check the required checkbox. Now this is where we want some conditionality added. If it is a save draft, then it shouldn't be required. If we are adding the vehicle, then it should be required. But we won't know which is which until the user clicks add vehicle or until the user clicks save draft. Now, in our case, we're going to configure a validation group onto the add vehicle button. Now, if I click on the add vehicle button and I scroll down just a little bit here, we will see a validation group in the component configuration. So I'm gonna go ahead and tie a validation group to this button. And we're gonna name this validation group, add vehicle. Now we can name this validation group whatever we like, so long as we use that validation group anywhere else where we want that connection, that validation group connection. Okay, so I've done it here on the add vehicle button. So now I'm gonna to go to year because I don't want year to be required normally, but I do want it to be required if 
add vehicle is clicked. So right now it is the checkbox required, but I want it to be part of a validation group. Now the validation group is my add vehicle validation group. Okay, so you'll notice that the asterisk is now gone. It is no longer required, at least in the terms of submitting the interface, but it is required if you click add vehicle. So I'm gonna do the same thing for make, right? I'm gonna go on down to my validation group. I'm gonna add it to the same validation group. But I also may wanna change the required message. So maybe something like this is required for adding a new vehicle. Maybe we would do the same thing for year, same thing for model and so forth. So what we've done so far is we've added a validation group to my add vehicle button. And I gave year and make a link to the same validation group. So you'll notice the difference. No more asterisks here. They are technically not required if you simply submit the form, AKA if you submit it as a draft, but they are required for these ones because they have the little asterisk there. Okay, so let's see if it works. I'm gonna click Save Draft. Now, when you click Save Draft, it still does the validation because we are submitting the form. So it still is gonna require you to have validations for anything that is required. But year and make are not yelling at me because those use validation groups. So if I click Add Vehicle, all of a sudden, year and make are required because they are part of that validation group. And you'll notice a value is required and this is required for adding a new vehicle. So when you need that conditional requiredness added to your interfaces, utilize validation groups to just give it some extra uh, flexibility in what is required for submitting a form. Okay, that's it. We'll see you in the next one.